Father, we give you the praise and we give you the glory in this place. Father, we want to pause and say thank you for invading this space, this place at this time. We bless you for all that you have done. We thank you for your presence. It's rich in this place and we give you praise for it. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. As we dive into the word of God this morning, we thank you that your word will not come back void. It will accomplish what pleases you. It will prosper where it's sent. So we send the word to everyone listening under the sound of my voice. We command every situation, every circumstance to get in line with God's word. The Bible says it's those that are hearers and doers of the word of God. Those are the individual that will be blessed. And so we set our hearts to be hearers and doers. We declare our lives will never be the same. Move, heal, deliver, set free. Make a way where there seems to be no way. We pause in advance and say thank you, oh God, for all that will happen today. Every good thing that happens, we'll tell everybody that you did it. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name. Everybody believe it said, amen and thank God. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. The text is Romans chapter 4. We're reading from verse 1 down to verse 5. Romans chapter 4, verse 1 down to verse 5. For sake of time, I'm going to read this out of the NIV translation. The NIV translation. Amen. Romans chapter 4, verse 1 down to verse 5. It says... What then shall we say that Abraham, our, our forefathers, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does Scripture say? Abram believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. You can stop right there. This morning, we're going to talk about righteousness on credit. Righteousness on credit. As we dive into the book of Romans, Romans has been, has been deemed the constitution of Christianity. It is, that, it is that big and that large and that broad and that deep. It has been, it has been, it has been, it has been categor, it has been categorically mentioned as the manifesto of Christodom, Christodism. Other words, it is how a believer would come to know justification by faith. Romans is a book where Paul decided to put his thematic thrust on the fact that you are righteous, not based on your works, but based on your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives his, he gives a systematic theology as to the fact he, or he, he begins to flesh out the doctrine of righteousness. It is in Romans that we hear things as, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to the Greeks and also to the Jews. For therein, therein where? Therein the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Paul spends time writing this book. He writes this book somewhere around 57 AD at the end of his ministry. He did not find, he did not found, he, he was not the founder, let me just say that. He was not the founder of the church of Rome, but he was so, he was very much an influencer. Some have said that, that the, 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 the beginning days of Rome happened, or, or the, the church in Rome happened as far as the, 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 the event of the Pentecost. 
that after the Pentecostal experience, men and women went from that experience and established a church in Rome. As such, Paul comes to bring some kind of order, stability, doctrine, as it relates to this idea of righteousness. He speaks to the Jews and he tells them, he says, in Romans 10, he says, my prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. Excuse me, may, may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to, to, to knowledge. It says, them being ignorant of God's righteousness, They've gone about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. So there is your own righteousness and there is the righteousness of God. There is your own righteousness and there is the righteous. He says, my prayer for Israel is that, is that they might be saved. I thought Israel was already saved. He said, because the reason why I'm praying for them is because they've gone about to establish their own righteousness. Are you following me now? So this morning, we're going to talk about righteousness on credit. Righteousness what? On credit. Okay, okay. So, 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 it, it, it now, it, it now uh, uh, begs the question is, what is righteousness? What's righteousness? Because, because if you're thinking righteousness is what I do, amen, you might be, you might be, you might be wrong based on what the Bible says. And so we're gonna go, we're gonna go line upon line, scripture upon scripture to understand what it, now why is that so important? Because if the enemy can, if the enemy can um, attack your righteousness, he will attack your faith. If he can attack your faith, he can attack how you live. Are you following me now? And so righteousness becomes important because the Bible says, Rome, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, it says, For with the heart man, for with the heart man believes what? Unto what? Righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it's amazing how many, how many, how, how very little we've heard about righteousness. Are you following me now? And we've equated righteousness based on what I do. Are you following me now? And not understanding, not understanding that righteousness is what I believe. If I can believe right, I'll do right. Are you following me this morning? And so let's talk about, let's talk about, we're talking about, we're talking about righteousness on credit. Anybody ever used a credit card before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. R righteousness. On credit. In other words, you, 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 you get to buy a thing and enjoy it without, without even having the money for it. Yeah, yeah. And some of us, some of us, we, we've, been, we've been too happy on that credit card, and it shows. Yeah, yeah. And so now, now uh, January was a, we, you, you felt a pinch, January, because all December long, you were happy with the credit card. Yeah, you went to the store, you went to the store, and you just swiped and swiped, not knowing at the end of the day, you're going to have to pay, and you follow me now, for the swiping that you've done. Amen. But the good news is, Jesus Christ has already swiped, he's already paid all your swiping that you could ever do. Are you following me? I said, Jesus Christ has already paid for all the swiping you will ever do. Are you following me now? No, no, no. L let's, let's look at this. I'm going to give you some definitions here. Then we're going we're to go into some scriptures. Now, what is righteousness? Righteousness. Righteousness is living in accordance to God's standards. Righteousness is living... In accordance to God's st standards, what is righteousness? Righteousness is a state of being, a state of being morally upright and just before God. What is righteousness? Righteousness is a conforming to the word of God. That I bring my life in, 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 in subjection to the word of God. I conform to the word of God. I don't explain the word of God away. I conform to the word of God. What is righteousness? Righteousness is agreement with the truth. Are you following me now? What the truth says, I agree with it. 
Amen. I may be totally, I may be totally not there yet, but I agree with it. Anybody? Yeah. R righteousness is, righteousness is, it's, it's, it is, it is, it is, it is acting in integrity. Acting what? In integrity. That's righteousness. Righteousness also means, it means doing what is just. Are you following me now? No, no, no. Let's, let's look at this in a different light because, because some say, well, well, pastor, I thought, all, I thought you're saying not to do, but you're saying doing in the same breath. Okay. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll put it like this. What you do doesn't make you righteous, but righteous people do just things. Are, are you following me now? What you do doesn't make you just, but righteous people do just things. Other words, coming to church doesn't make you saved, but saved people come to church. Y'all get that? Yeah. It, it's, it, it, you have to be first before you can do. The problem is we've been focused so much, the church has been focused so much on doing without being. Righteousness is, is being authentic to what God has made. Being what? Authentic. Yeah. I'm not faking this. This ain't, this ain't a show. Are you following me now? I'm, a, I'm true to this. I'm not new to this. I'm trying to follow me now. Okay, okay, okay. So, 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 as we dive into this text this morning, notice, notice, no, no, notice, what, notice where we are. Notice where, where we are. Uh, notice where we are. Paul says, what shall we say that Abraham, our forefathers, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? What shall we say that Abraham in the flesh discovered in this matter so the question is what did he discover because at, at, when we begin when we when we began this text he said what shall we say that Abraham our forefathers has what discovered so the question is what did Abraham discover because you 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 and I understand that when we when we when we are quoting this particular text being credited righteousness being credited uh, 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 by faith we understand that goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 15 when the Bible says and Abraham believed God hmm? the question is what did Abraham do to get righteous huh the answer is absolutely nothing we keep okay. Let me let me just let me just uh, let me just take a side a side a side note here. We keep saying Abraham, the man of faith, huh? And Abraham, you know, we somewhat elevate Abraham. And really, when you look at the life of Abraham, you understand Abraham ain't no he wasn't no better than you and I. Are you following me now? Abraham wasn't any better than you are. Why am I saying this? Because the enemy's job is to convince you that you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You don't have enough faith. Yeah, if you pray enough, if you only fast enough, if you obey him enough, if you hear him enough, then maybe you could be delivered. Well, let's bring Abraham, for instance. God speaks to Abraham and says, leave your country. Go to a place I will show you. Are you following me? Leave your father's house and your kindred and go to the place I'm going to show you and I'm, I'm going to bless you and make your name great. Are you following me now? Now, if God were to tell you that, he, he told you to do that, and you know it was God, how much faith is going to tell you, how, how much faith is, going, is it going to take you to leave? Not, none whatsoever. Why? Because you heard him. Are you following me now? God says, leave where you are, and I'm going to bless you. O okay. I mean, just simple, I mean, this is just common sense. I'm not blessed right now. God says, if I leave, I'm just going to bless me. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave. But the problem with you, the problem with you and between you and Abraham is, I would have, I would have left and left everybody. I, I said, I would have left because guess what? I heard God. 
Are you following me? It, it's, I'm not imagining anything. God himself came to me and says, leave where you are, your kindred, all of your father's house, and go to the place I will show you. That's what he said. Somebody said, that's what he said. That's what he said. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not hard of hearing. Are you following me now? So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pack my bags. Daddy, I love you, but I got to go. Unc, hmm? I love you, I got to go. Nephew. I said, nephew, I love you, but I got to go. But guess what Abraham did? He brought nephew, Lot. Are you following me now? He brought Lot, and he got into a lot of problems. Hmm? Then the Bible says, okay, we're talking about Abraham, right? We're talking about the righteousness connected to Abraham. I'm trying to show you that, that don't, don't let the enemy bamboozle bomb, you. Are you. Don't let the enemy try to, try to take the faith that God has put on the inside of you and make it and, and with your own mouth begin to say, I don't have enough faith. Or with your own thoughts begin to say, I'm not good enough. Are you following me? Abraham, he goes to a place, he says, God says, okay, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And the Bible says, there came a famine in the land. Guess what Abraham did? Did he, did he, did he keep going where God told him to go? No. Where did he go? He went to Egypt. And he went to Egypt as he was going there and said, hey, you know, Sarah, you look good. Them boys may be looking at you. And because I'm trying, you know, I don't want him to kill me. So just tell him you're my sister. That ain't, that, that ain't right in any culture. Are you following me now? I said, that ain't right in any culture. That you're not going to stand up for your girl? And you call yourself a dude? Are you following me now? You're going to let her, you're going to let somebody take your girl to their house? And not know what's going on? The devil is a liar. Huh? Are you following? So what, what am I saying? I'm saying that when Abraham, when it was credited to Abraham as righteousness, it was not based on Abraham's obedience. Are you following me now? It wasn't based on what he had done. It's simply God said, saying, I'm going to give you this righteousness on credit. I'm going to give you this, what, this righteousness where? On credit. You don't have what it takes right now, but that's okay. I'm going to give you this righteousness on credit. Are you following me now? No, 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 no. Let, let, let's, let, 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 let's, let, let's get back into this. It says, it says, it says this. What shall we say that Abraham, our forefathers, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? What matter? Now, for us to, for us to understand the matter, let's go to Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Romans 3, verse 19. Let's understand the matter that Paul is talking about. Paul named, uh, uh, Saul named Paul. Yeah, Saul of Tarsus. He was a, um, he was a terrorist. Are you following me now? He came to kill Christians, and God got a hold of him. I said he came to do what? To kill Christians, and God got a hold of him. Don't you tell me, did you tell me God can't get a hold of your boy? Or get a hold of your girl? Are you following me now? Or your, or your father or your mother? Are you listening to me now? Okay. Okay, see what it says. In, 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 in Romans 3 and verse 19, I'm going to read this out of the NLT. NLT so, so that you can have some kind of um, understanding. Are you following me now? Yeah, yeah. NLT says, obviously the law applies to those to whom it was given. For its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. The entire world is what? Guilty before God. In other words, all of us, all of us in our best days were still guilty before God. Now, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let, let's keep going. It says this. For no man can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law mean, meaning the Torah. Are you following me? No man can be made right. Somebody said, well, well, Pastor, I'm going to just do the Ten Commandments. You, that's the... 
that still ain't going to make you right. Hmm? The law was not given so, the law was not given uh, 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 so you can be righteous. The law was given to show you how much unrighteousness is on the inside of you. Okay, let me say this, let me put it this way. The test wasn't given so you can pass it. <laughs> the test was given to show you how much you don't know. Matter of fact, being a, being a graduate of Georgia Tech, that's really the philosophy of, the, of, the, of, those, of those professors. They weren't giving you a test to, 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 for, you to, 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 for you to learn anything. I, they were giving you a test show, to show you you don't know nothing. It's a sense of humility. So you take a test and you get, you get minus 10. How in the world are you going to get minus 10? Minus I mean, that's, that's zero minus 10. Are you following me now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you listening to me now? No, 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 no. See what it says. See what it says. It says this. For no one can ever be made right by, with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. <laughs> Somebody said, well, pass up and do the comm Ten Commandments. Well, I wish you well. Hmm? I said, I wish you well. It shows how sinful we are. What does that mean? It shows, it shows us that we all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. That without Jesus, we have a failing grade. Are you following me now? Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep, let's keep going because it gets, it gets good. <laughs> I said what? It gets what? It gets good. I know, I, know, I know I got a master's degree, but it just sounds right. Is that all right? It just sounds right. Now, now, now see what it says. It says, but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in, in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We were made right. Now, now when, when, when you hear made right, hear the word righteousness. Because that's what you was hearing in, in the King James. If we read it, if, if we were reading this in the King James, you would hear righteousness or justification, justified. Are you following me? It's the same word. Are you following me now? Now, so see what it says. See what it says. Verse twenty-two. It says, "We were made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, and this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are." Are you seeing this here now? It is the emphasis is in believing and not doing. Are you following me now? Otherwise, I got, I got to get my believer right. I got to get my believer right. And, 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 the answer, and what's going to affect my believer is what's, my, what's, my, what's in my heart. Are you following me now? And, 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 that's what, and so the enemy, okay, let me say this way. The battle might be in the mind, but the war is for the heart. I said the battle might be in the mind, but the war, the war is for the heart. If I can get the now when I say heart, dear God, don't be thinking no no you know physical organ. The thing that pump blood. Are you following me? That guy, no, that guy has nothing to do with what I'm saying. When I say heart, I'm talking about the core of who you are. The essence of who you when I when I cut when I come when I when I cut you to the center, what is that? It's you. The heart. So that's why the Bible says, for with the heart, which your be with, with, with the core of who you are, man believes unto righteousness. If I can affect your heart, I can affect your life. Are you listening to me now? Okay, let's keep going. Let's, let's keep going. It says, it says, for everyone has sinned, and we have all fallen short of God's glorious standards. Now, we know that scripture. You know, Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Yeah. But see what it says, and we stop there. We, we stop there. Why don't you keep reading? It says this, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this, he did this through Jesus Christ 
when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. So now, so now, yeah, I know you did it, but you don't have to suffer the consequences. Okay, I, I'll say it again. I said, I know you did it, but you don't have to suffer the consequences. Human nature is you did it, and you're going you're gonna to have to suffer, pay for it. Jesus says, no, you did it, but I'm, I'm, I've or you did it, but I've already, I've already taken the consequences. Are you following me now? Okay, you say, well, Pastor, what are you talking about? What I'm, what I'm saying is, is grace and mercy showed up after you did it. Because if grace and mercy ain't, hadn't shown up after you did it, you and I wouldn't be looking at each other right now. Either you or I would be dead right now because the wages of sin is dead. Are you following me now? You'd have to pay for what you did. Yeah. Yeah. And you nor I could ever pay for what we did. I said you nor I can ever pay for what we did. So we all need God. Are you following me now? We need God. Yeah. On your best day, you still can't pay for what you did wrong. Are you following me now? What am I saying? The righteousness of God is on credit to you and I. It's on credit. And so that's why we've got to come with, with we've got to come, we, we've got to come to God knowing, understanding that we have a reverence for God because of all that He's done in your he, all that He's done in your past, in your present, and in your future. Are you listening to me now? Okay, okay, let, let, let's keep going. Let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. See what it says. See what it says. See what it says. It says this. It says, it says, it says this. It says, for, it says, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ when, we, when he freed us from the penalty, the penalty. So what am I saying? I'm saying, okay, I know you did it. I know you're wrong. I know you're guilty. But understand this. First John, first John 1 and 9 says, if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just. To forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? It means I don't have to, I don't have to carry the shame and the guilt and the worry and the confusion anymore. Are you following me now? I can lay down at the altar and say, God, I confess my sins. And your scripture says you are faithful and just. Now, you say, well, Pastor, Pastor, uh, uh. Uh, but 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 what if what if folks ain't sincere? Well, that that ain't your job. They ain't got nothing to do with you. That's between them and God. Hmm? I said that's between who? Them and God. Yeah. You're talking to somebody that is you're talking to somebody that knows that knows your thought before you think your thought. So how you going how you gonna put a blind eye on God? I say, how are you going to put a blind eye on God? Are you listening to me now? But the Bible says, if I, if I, if, if I confess my sin, meaning if I, am, if, if, I am, if I am there at that point and I'm saying, God, forgive me, he will cleanse me. And so, and so once he's cleansed me, I don't have to keep going back to him and saying, God, cleanse me again. Because he's already cleansed me based on the, 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 the sin that I committed. Are you following me now? Now, let's keep going because I've got to get, I've got, I've got to leave. Okay, okay. See, see what it says. It says this. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from, from the penalty of sin. It says, for God, present, God, for God presented Jesus as a sacrifice of sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shed in his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in time past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he will do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, what, do, what, 
what you be, what are you believing? Yeah, what are you believing? Are you following me now? He makes sinners, not, not, not saints, sinners. I said not saints, but who? Sinners. Sinners. Yeah, yeah, sinners. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make them, he made them, he made them right. He made them right. Now, he made them right, and he keeps making, he keeps making them right. Because how many people know that even since you're, even, even, even since you're born again experience, you still sin? Anybody? Yeah. I'm going to throw a rock on your face if you don't lift up your hands and my feet. I, I, are you following me now? Yeah. 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 But he makes, it don't matter because he makes sinners right. He said, make me right. Are you following me now? Somebody said, God, make me right. Yeah, God will make me right. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. Now, 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 now. Okay, okay, now. Oh, I got so much to give you. Okay, okay, okay. So now, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's, let's look at this. The word righteous also means the word right or correct or straight. So make you straight. Make you right. Make you correct. Are you following me now? Now, the emphasis of, be, of, of, of God's righteousness or the reason why God does what he does is so that it's because of his overwhelming love. The reason why God makes you right is not because of you. It's because of him. Mm? The reason why, okay, let me put it this way. The reason why I forgive my children it's not because of them. It's because of me. Hmm? You, you, you understand what I'm saying? What, what I'm saying is the reason why I release, I give them grace, is not because of them. Why? Because I don't want to, I don't want to keep looking at them and looking at them based on the wrong that they've done. Hmm? Why? Because that, that's going to alter the way I love them. It's going to change. If I keep looking at them based on what they did wrong, it's going to alter the way I love them. Okay. You said, you said Pastor, what you're talking about. Okay. Let's go to, hmm. Let's go to, ah. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 40. Ah. Let's go to Isaiah 40. 45. Let's go to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Let's look at verse 25. Isaiah 43 and verse 25. Let's see what, let's see what, let, let, let's see what the Bible says here. Isaiah 40 what? 43 and verse 25. See what it says. It says this. It says, I, okay, 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 okay. Okay, let's, yeah, we, we, we can go there. I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgression. For what? My own sake. Not for your own sake. God says, I blotted, I blotted out your transgression. For whose sake? For his sake. Why? Because he don't want to be looking at you based on that, that, that what you did last night. Are you following me now? Where you went last night? What you drank? What you smoked up? Are you following me now? What you engaged in? He don't want to keep looking at you like that. And so because he doesn't want to keep looking at you like that, are you following me now? He blots out your sin. What? For his, for his sake. For his sake. And so when you come to God, you can come to God boldly. Boldly with confidence. Saying, go, go into the throne of grace, and on the throne of grace, he says, you're going to find mercy and grace to help you in a time of need. Now, 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 now it, th 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 there is a, a posture of, of when you know you're wrong. You ever, you ever, you ever, you ever went to somebody and you know you're wrong? You don't go, to, you don't go in there confidently. 
Are you following? You, you, you almost, you almost tiptoed in there. Are you following me now? No, you don't go confidently. No, and you know you're wrong. No, that's, there's a sense of, 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 of shame hmm? that you've done wrong. Hmm? Are you following me now? That, that you've done wrong. Yeah. But when you, when you know you're right with God, you go, you, go into the throne, you go into the throne room, almost sit on his lap. Hey, God, how you doing? Praise the Lord. Anybody? I, I, like, what's going on, God? How you doing? Yay, it, it's your son again. Are you following me now? What's happening? There's confidence. Confidence. Righteousness would, righteousness will, releases confidence. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 10, verse 35, it says, cast not away your confidence. Why? Because it has, it has great recompense of reward. You have need of patience. And after you've done the will of God, you might do what? Inherit the promise. The enemy is after your righteousness. If he stops your righteousness, he'll stop your confidence. If he stops your confidence, then you can receive what God has promised you. And you follow me now. So it's more than just being a goody goody two shoe. Are you following me? And dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. It's my life is on the line here. My life is on the line here. Are you following me now? Okay. Let's keep, let's, let's keep, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now, 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 now. Now, okay, okay, okay. Now, ah, righteousness, right alignment with God. Right alignment with God. So I'm taking, I'm, I'm really just in sync with the steps of God. Now, the Bible says that our self-righteousness is as filthy rags before God. That's found in Isaiah 64, verse 5 and 6. It says, our righteousness, your righteousness, my righteousness, what we can, what we say, what we deem as right, is as filthy rags before God. If it's not birthed out of faith, out of believing what Jesus Christ has already done. What am I saying? I'm saying the, your, the essence of what you are doing is rightness. The rightness comes from receiving this gift that, that receiving this gift that Jesus Christ has already done by shedding his blood. And that gift now, that, that gift that has been released to us empowers us to live right. Are you following me now? So I live right not because of my will. I live right because of the gift. Hmm? I live right because of the gift of righteousness. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, okay. So, so now let, let's 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 work this a little bit. Let's let's work this, because the Bible says in Matthew five verse twenty, the Bible says in Matthew five verse twenty that our righteousness ought to exceed. Let's go there. Matthew five verse twenty ought to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and, and, the, and the scribes. Matthew 5, verse 20, it says this. It says, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So somehow righteousness is connected to the kingdom of heaven. Are you following me now? Righteousness is what is connected to the kingdom of heaven. So now my righteousness has to exceed the righteousness of what? Of the Pharisees and the scribes. Isn't that what he said? Okay. Now let's go to uh, let's go to Luke chapter Luke chapter 18 and let's see the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Luke 18, verse 9. Luke 18, verse 9. Are you, are you getting anything out of this today? Okay. Luke 18, verse 9. It's going to get, it's going to get gooder. Amen. Somebody says it's going to get gooder. Yeah, Ebonics, I know, but it, it, just, it just feels right. Amen. Uh, Luke 18, verse 9. See what it says. It says, He spake this, certain, he spake this parable 
upon certain which trusted in themselves. He did what? He spent this parable upon certain that which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. They were righteous. And so they looked down on others. Anybody ever met anybody like that? Yeah, yeah. Some of us can look in the mirror and see, 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 see who I'm talking about. Yeah. Righteous and we despise others. Yeah, I won't. See, look, you don't, you know, you don't say it. You don't, you, you're not going to say I despise you. No, no. It's in your words, in your action, the way you look, the way you kind of front, put your eyes up and frown and, 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 and talk in the, you know, you know, talk in the back in the booth in the corner and, 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 and talk about the situation as if you've never done it before. As if, as if, as if, as if. It wasn't, it wasn't, but, it wasn't but too many, it wasn't but a few months ago, uh, maybe a year or two ago that you were doing the same thing. But, but somehow we, 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 we think we're righteous. We're, we're too heavily, mind, he, heavily minded that we're no earthly good. We, we put our nose up there and we look down on everybody that, that even resembles us and even act like us. And, and they're smoking weed and we, we put our nose up there. It wasn't, it wasn't long ago that you were, you were smoking your own self. Are, are you, follow, you, were, you were full of yourself. Maybe you weren't smoking weed, but you were smoking yourself. Are you following me now? It wasn't, it wasn't long. It wasn't long when you, you, were, you, you, you were acting the fool. It wasn't long. I said it wasn't long when, 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 when you, were, you, you, were, you, you, you were you were away, away from what God had promised to you. And, and, and you, you, you cried out to God and God forgave you and, and delivered you and rescued you and, and empowered you and prospered you and, and favored you and had mercy on you in spite of you. In spite of you. And somehow we look, look, look our nose down on others. Look our nose down on others because they're going through. And one, one years, it one, one a few years ago where you you were going through. That's why you've got to you gotta rely on the mercy of God. You've got to you gotta you gotta you not only rely on the mercy of God, you've got to give mercy. Are you, got, are you following me? You, you've got to give compassion. You've got to give humility. Are you following me now? You've got to you've got to give people, give people room for error, room to make a mistake. Are you following me now? Because who are you? Who, who, who are you? Now, now let, 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 let's look at this. It says, it says, it says, it says, it says this. It says, it says, it says, it says, it says this. It says, uh, it says, two men went, two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, a Pharisee, except your righteousness exceed the, 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 the righteousness of the Pharisee and Sadducee, you shall not have part in the kingdom of God. Two men went up to pray, one a Pharisee, one and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Thus with himself. In other words, his prayer won't go no way. He was, so full, he was so intoxicated as to who he was, what he did, how well, how well he was in the faith that he, he, he bypassed who God was. He failed to understand that the reason why he's breathing is because of God. And so he was so intoxicated with himself. As such, he prayed to himself. He prayed to himself. He was going to pray and answer the prayer all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. He prayed to himself. See what he said. He said this, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men. <laughs> yeah. Extortioners, unjust, or you, you can say uh, 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 connivers, or, or you can say bootleggers. Uh, you follow me now. I'm not like, I'm not like any of these men. Yeah. Liars, no, no, I'm not. Unjust, idolaters, fornicators, I'm not like them. Or even as the publican, I fast twice a week. Mm. I give my tithe of all that I possess. Mm. Are you following me now? What am I saying? You can do all of these things and still be wrong. Still be wrong. It's not what you do, it's a heart thing. It's, a, it's not a hand thing, it's a heart thing. 
Somebody look at him. He look at all that he do. He's like, man, that, he, 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 he right, he, he right at the throne of God. I mean, he almost kissing God right there. If you want, if you want to be a believer, go look at that man right there. He fasts twice a week. All his time, he go to the church. Amen. He is heaven sent, and his heart is so wrong. Heart is what? So wrong. It's a heart thing. It's not a hand thing. It's what? It's a heart thing. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Are you follow me now? What's it? Because, because it's what? Because the Bible says it's out of your heart that flows the issues of life. The force is in your heart. So I got to get your heart right. I got to get your heart right. Now, 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 okay, okay, let, now, okay, now, let, let's look at it, let's look, it says, the publican, the publican says this, it says, the publican standing afar off would not even lift up so much his eyes unto heaven, he smote upon his breast saying, God be merciful unto me, a sinner, I tell thee, this man went down to, 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 to his house, justified or right before God, rather than the other, for everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be what? Exalted. So there is an area of righteousness that deals with humility. Humility. Bible says, you, Bible says God resists the proud. The proud. It's amazing to me that I, I've been in a lot of rooms. Been in a lot of rooms. Been in a lot of rooms. And it's amazing to me that folk don't get, that folk that don't have nothing are the most prideful people that you you can ever meet. They they don't have they don't have, I mean they I mean they, they, I mean okay maybe they have a little a little something look, but it ain't much it really won't ain't much and they're so prideful and it's like my God my God I mean my God no wonder God ain't blessing you anymore. If He blesses you any more than what He's doing right now, I mean my God nobody be able to talk. Nobody will be able to talk because they so they so prideful. Are you following me now? The Bible says God resisted the proud. But does, what, what does he do? He gives grace. Grace. G grace to the humble. What am I saying? If you just, if you just, if you just stay down, it won't be long before God brings you up. I say if you just stay what? If you just stay down. Amen. It wouldn't be long before God brings you up. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's go. Are you all, are you all, can you all take a little more? Can you, okay, okay. Now, 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 now. Now, we said, who is righteous? Who is righteous? Who is righteous? Let's, let's begin to un uncover, unpack this. Who is righteous? Go to Isaiah, Isaiah 45, verse 21. Who is righteous? How I, Isaiah 45, verse 21, he says this. He says, says declare what is to be present, uh, present with it, it, or present it, excuse me. I'm reading, I'm reading out of the, NL, the NIV. It says, declare what is to be, present it. Let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago? Who declared it from distant past? What is not, was it not I, the Lord? And there is no God apart from me, a righteous God, a Savior. There is none but me. I'm going to read this out of the, NL, the, the NLT. See what it says. Glory be to God. Ah. Who is, who is, who is what? Who's righteous? Yeah, who, who is righteous? Notice what it says in Isaiah 45 and verse 21. It says, consult together, argue your case, get together and decide what to say. Who made these things known so long ago? What idol have ever told you they would... What idol have ever told you they would have, what idol have ever told you they would happen? Okay, there we go. Was it not I, the Lord, 
for there is no other God but me, a righteous God and Savior. There is none but me. Let all the world look to me for salvation, for I am God and there is no other. I've sworn by my own name, I've spoken the truth, and I will never go back on my word. Every knee will bend to me and every tongue will declare allegiance to me. The people will declare the Lord is the source of all my righteousness and strength. And all who are angry with him will come to him and be ashamed. I, the Lord, and in the Lord, all the generation of Israel will be justified, and in him they will boast. Notice what it says. Notice, no, no, notice what just happened. He said this. He said this. It says this. It says, the people will declare, the Lord is the source of all my righteousness and strength. Is there a connection between righteousness and strength? Yes. Righteousness and strength. Yeah. Because the enemy's job, that's why the Bible says you ought to serve God with all your mind, your soul, and what? And your strength. There's a connection between your righteousness and your strength. Your strength. Are you following me now? Yeah, because what happens when your righteousness is attacked, what happens? Your strength is diminished. Hmm? And that's the enemy's job. In other words, your strength, Bible says this, uh, uh, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold to eternal life. What happens, when, what, what happens, what happens if, if, if you don't have any strength to fight? Hmm? It says, it, it says in Proverbs, it says, if you faint in a day of adversity, it's because your strength is too small. What happens? What, what, what am I saying? You're going to have days of adversity. It's not if they're coming. <laughs> it's when they're coming. Are you following me now? And your righteousness becomes your what? Your strength. Somebody say, my righteousness is my strength. Come on. Say, my, my, my righteousness is my strength. So who is righteous? God is righteous. We know that. God is righteous. Yeah, God. Your God is righteous. Who else is righteous? L let's go to 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. See what it says. It says, in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30, it says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification, and what? And redemption. He's been made, he, he's been made unto us what? Wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and what? And redemption. So who, are, who has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption? Who is that? Jesus Christ. So who else is righteous? Jesus Christ is righteous. Hmm? So we know God is righteous. Jesus is righteous. Who else is righteous? Somebody look at your name and say, say you are. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you are righteous. Yeah, you are. So let's go, let's go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 5, verse 17. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Verse Corinthians 5, 7, I'll read this out of, of the NIV. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all new things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of what? Of reconciliation. Not the ministry of tearing people apart or frustration. The ministry of what? Reconciliation. Not the ministry of condemnation. Hmm? The ministry of what? Reconciliation. Are you following me now? Reconcil Other words, our goal is to reconcile people together to God. 
Are you following me now? It shouldn't be everything was working right until you showed up. And you brought hell into place. Huh? No. It should be everything was working okay, but when you showed up, if you made it better, you made it better. Are you following me now? Let's keep going. Let's see what it says. It says, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself and not imputing their trespasses unto them. Now, why, didn't, why, wasn't, he, why wasn't he imputing their, their trespasses unto them? Come on now, class. Why wasn't he imputing their trespasses unto them? Why is that? Because of Christ, okay, okay, but because of himself. Isn't that what we, what we read in, uh, in Isaiah 45? He, did, he blot out their, their, transgression, their, their transgression, what? For his sake. For his sake. It wasn't because of what they did. Yeah, it wasn't because of how good they were. The truth is, they probably, was, they, they probably were as bad, as bad as they were when, when, they got, when they got forgiven as they would the next day. Anybody? Anybody ever said, I'll never do this again? Or just me? Huh? And the next day, guess what you were doing? You were doing the very same thing that you were telling God you were never going to do again. God, I'll never do this again. I'll I, I never, I never do this again. God, if you if you if you do it, I never do. And the the, the, the are you far? It went about four, four or five hours, and here you go, here you go. Are you following me now? Okay, okay, okay. That's how good your God is. I say what? That's how what good your God is. Notice what it says. It says, to it that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed, ha had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us. Who him? Him who? Christ. He had made Christ to be sin for us. Who? Us who? Us we. Who knew no sin? Who didn't know no sin? Christ did not know a sin. That we, we, me and you, we knucklehead ones, we that always do wrong, we might be made the righteousness of God. We that's always making excuses. We that's always going to God and saying, God, forgive me. God, if you, if you bring me out this time, I'll never do it again. Yeah, yeah, we that don't know, we, we, we that don't know how, 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 how to let deliverance uh, 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 take its full course. We take half a deliverance and we jump back into what God delivered us from not too long. Are you for anybody? Yeah, yeah, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about when you were, I'm not talking about when you weren't saved. I'm talking about why you were saved. Yeah, yeah, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, are you following me now? Why are you saved, love God, tongue speaking? Yeah, and you're still sitting on the side. Got a chick on the side. Are you following me now? Jesus, Jesus, your main squeeze, but you got a chick on the side that you ain't gonna never, never let go. That's who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that one that needs total deliverance. Yeah, that's who I'm. Are you following me now? Now don't look at me with that sanctified tone. Yeah, because you know exactly what I'm talking about. Are you following me now? Okay, okay, let's keep going. Let's, they ain't say nothing, Jesus. They not say nothing, Jesus. No amen, amen. Are you following me now? I don't lost, I don't lost everybody. Amen, amen. That's okay. That's okay. I live with you, so I know it. I say I live with you, so I know it. Are you following me now? I can smell you coming, amen. Praise God. Okay, okay, okay. So what is it? The righteousness of God. You've been made the righteousness of God. So who else is righteous? You are. You are. In spite of what you've done, you are. Not because of what you've done. In spite of what you've done, you're still the righteousness of God. Are you following me now? What am I saying? You don't stop being a U.S. citizen because you go to England. Hmm? I say, you don't stop being a U.S. citizen because you're now you're in England. You've been made the righteousness of God. Now, 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 okay, 
pastor, I made the righteousness of God. Thank you, Jesus. Does that mean I can do anything I want? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because with your righteous self, if with your righteous self, you're going to mess around, keep doing that unrighteous stuff, and bust hell wide open. <laughs> Are you following me now? Don't let, don't let him catch you doing unrighteous stuff. Okay, okay, let me give you this. Not my words. Not, not my words. Let's go to the epistles. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's read this. In, uh, in, in verse 9, first, uh, verse 9 down to verse 12. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9, verse, uh, verse 9 down to verse 12. Notice what it says. I'll, I'll read this out of the NLT. The NLT says this. Don't you realize, and I've got to close. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, who is he talking to? Hmm? Who is he talking to? Believers, you don't talk about you won't talk about you won't he won't talk to unbelievers or sinners or non believers. He was talking to believers. Why? Because sinners sin, that's all they know to do. He won't talk to them. It'll be it'll be futile for them to say, I, I, don't you realize those who do wrong? We, that's what we do. It's like I mean, it's like asking a snake why you're slithering. That's what he does. Asking a, a dog, why you're backing, barking. That's what it does. I, you follow me now? So sinners are going to sin. But he says, okay, I'm, I'm addressing the Corinthian church, and I've got to bring order and let you know that, that yeah, you're righteous, but if you keep doing, if you keep doing unrighteous things, something didn't, th something didn't stick. I said something didn't stick. Hmm? Now, now, what am I saying? I'm not. It, what am I saying? I'm not saying that you're struggling with sin. I'm saying that you are enjoying sin. Yeah, you are enjoying it. Yeah, are you following me now? Because as believers, we should be struggling with it. We should be, we should struggle with. It. In other words, when I do it, it ought, it ought to bother me. But when it don't bother me no more, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Big trouble. I'm about to, are you following me now? I need, I need major deliverance. Okay, see what it says. It says, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit what? The kingdom of God. Those who do what? Those who do what? Those who do wrong. Wrong. Now, it's going to tell us what, what those wrong are. It says, it says, don't fool yourselves. Are you following me now? Why, now, why is it saying that? Because some of us can take this and say, well, okay, it's not what I do, it's what I believe. So, yeah, I'm going to believe this, but I'm going to do that. And it don't compute. Because if you believe this, you're going to do this. Are you following me now? Yeah. Y your believer is going to affect your doing. Yeah. But if, if, if your believer is, is, is contradicts what you are doing, then something is not computing. There's a, there's a short circuit, circuit there. Are you following me now? Bible says it this way. Let, let, me, let, me, let me give you a scripture. Bible says it this way. By their fruits, you will know them. Fruits. By their fruits. Yeah. Yeah. You believe what you believe. Praise God. Nobody can see that. But we can see your fruit. Are you following me now? You call yourself an orange, an orange tree all you want. Or if, I, if I stand there long enough, I'm going to see your fruit. Are you following me now? now? Now, if you call yourself an orange all day long and I stand there long enough and you, and, you, and you brought out pineapple, guess what? You ain't an orange. I don't care what you say. I say you ain't an orange. Are you following me now? Are you listening to me now? Okay, see what it says. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. See what it says. It says, those who indulge, it says, it says, don't fool yourselves. Those who, ind 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 those who indulge in sexual sins or who worship idols or commit adultery or male prostitutes or practice homosexuality. Is that in the Bible? Or are thieves. Is that in the Bible? Or are greedy people. Is that in the Bible? Mm, greedy. It's mine. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. 
It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. And you marry it. You're a greedy person. Are you following me now? Are you, are you, is, and, and when it's theirs, you want theirs, but you also want yours. You're greedy. Are you following me? See what it said. All greedy people. All drunkards, you drunks, the side social drinkers. Yeah. All abusers. Well, pa okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to just leave that alone. Pastor, can we? Okay, okay, I'm going to just leave that. All abusers. All cheap people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm? What did he say? Some of you were once like that. Notice what, did, what, notice what he did not say. He did not say some of you are like that. Huh? He says what, what? You were like. The problem is we're st we still are like that. No. He says some of su such were. Were. So what is this? So now I've got to believe right, but now I've got to fight my actions to line up with what I believe. Because my flesh wants to do everything in the, everything right here. My flesh loves it. Everything it needs. Yeah. You leave your flesh alone long enough, it's going to take control. Are you following me now? You leave your flesh. What am I saying? You don't read the word of God. You don't pray. Are you following me now? You, you, don't, you don't practice a, 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 a temperance and you don't practice love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. If you don't practice all those things, the fruit of the spirit in your life, what's going to happen? You, your flesh is going to take over. Big time. Big time. And you look at yourself in the mirror and you can't even recognize yourself. Are you following me now? Okay. Okay, I've got to go. I've got to go. Notice what it says. Some were some of you, but you are cleansed. You are made holy, and you are made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I will not become a slave to anything. Amen. I will not become a slave to anything. So, so that is that is coffee. I'm not going to become a slave to coffee. I don't have to. Have, I don't have to have coffee in the morning. That's soda. I'm not going to become a slave to, to soda. Hmm? Are you following me now? That's ice cream. I'm not going to become a slave to ice cream. Well, I can't help myself. Then you are 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 in a slippery slope. That's donut. I'm not going to become a slave to donut. Are you following me now? I'm not going to become a slave to food. Are you following me now? I'm going to shut it down. Are you listening to me now? I'm going to discipline myself. Paul says, I, I, keep, I keep my body under subjection. Lest after I preach to others, I myself become a castaway. Are you following me now? So yeah, there's this essence of believing, but at the same time, I've got to discipline my flesh. No, you're not going to look at that. No, you're not going to go there. No, you're not going to call her. No, you're not going to call him. I'm going to discipline my flesh. Even though my, my flesh is crying out loud, I'm going to discipline my flesh. Are you fine? No, you're not going to say that. No, you're not going to give them a piece of your mind. I'm going to discipline my flesh. Yeah. No, you're not, you're not going to curse him out. No, you're not going to say that. I'm going to discipline my flesh. Are you following me now? It's called maturity. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to let my feelings, I'm not going to be ruled by my emotions. No, 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 no. I'm going to discipline my flesh. Are you following me now? Yeah. It may feel good, but it ain't right. They, everybody may be doing it, but it's not the word of God. Because at, at the end of the, I'm, I'm, at the end of the day, I got. I, I, I'm have to. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to answer to my my kinfolk. I got to answer to God. I got to answer to God. So, 
so nobody could be there. And I still got to do what's right. Are you following me now? I said nobody could be there, but I still got to do what's right. Are you following me now? Okay, 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 okay. Now, how far am I? Okay. Ah, okay. Can you, can you, okay, okay, okay. So, 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 so. The enemy's job is to bring condemnation. Let me do this and I'm done. I'll do this piece and I'm done. The enemy's job is to do what? Bring condemnation. And you, gotta be, you, got, you have to be aware of that. The Bible says this. It says in Isaiah 45, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 40, 54, verse 13. Isaiah 54, verse 13. See what it says. Isaiah 54, verse 13. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, my God, my God. I got to hurry, 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 hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Isaiah 54. The enemy's job is to bring condemnation. Isaiah 54 and verse 13. Walk our way down to verse 17. Notice what it says. It says, it says, And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of, the, of thy children. In righteousness Thou, in, in, in righteousness shall thou be established. In other words, in righteousness you're firm, you're tight, you're right. Are you following me now? Thou shalt be far from oppression, and thou, shalt, and thou shalt not fear, and from the terror, and it shall not come nigh thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth, the coal in the fire that bringeth forth all, all, all bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I created the waste to the destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every lying tongue that rises up against you in, in, in condemnation against you shall be condemned. Why? Because it says this, because this is the heritage of the servant of God. Their righteousness is not of their own self. So when you begin to, when you begin to, when you are now empowered to do right, don't you get the big head. When you've left that stuff alone and you've been totally de delivered, don't you now begin to say, it's the strength or the might of my hand that has caused me to walk in this glory. You've got to understand, no, the righteousness that I am displaying is because of God and not because of me. Are you following me now? Because now, why does it say, why does it say, why does it say uh, the, 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 the tongue that will rise up against in judgment? What, 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 what was it talking about? It's talking about the accuser of the brethren. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, excuse me, Revelation chapter 12, it, sa it talks about the accuser of the brethren in, in, uh, in verse 10. It says the accuser of the brethren that, that accuses the, the believers night and day. Night and day. You ever missed it before? And, and the enemy was accusing you night and day? Telling you how wrong you were? Beating you up? Are you following me now? Hmm? But the Bible says this. It says in, in 1 Corinthians, first, excuse me, 1 John chapter, chapter 3, it says, if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart and he knows all things. Are you following me now? Let's go there, let's go there, and I, I'll close with that. Let's, 1 John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 20. Let's go there, and I got to close. Hallelujah. 1 John 3, see what it says in verse 20. For if your heart condemns us, if our heart condemns us, it's possible. I say it's possible. Amen? 
if your heart condemns you, you did wrong, and, 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 now, and now the accuser of the brethren shows up, and now you're condemned. Hmm? Notice, notice con condemnation and conviction are two different things. Condemnation is the enemy trying to accuse you of what you're, what you're doing to, 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 cause you to, stay, to cause you to stay stuck in what you've done. Conviction is, is the Holy Spirit telling you that you've done wrong and, and now taking you from where you are to where you're supposed restoring you back to fellowship with God. Are you following me now? Two different things. Two different things. Are you following me now? No. So, the, so you, don't, you don't help yourself by condemning yourself or allowing the enemy to talk to you and stay, cause you to stay stuck. No, you've got to now switch over and get convicted. Are you following me now? And embrace the power of God, the love of God, the forgiveness of God to restore you back into fellowship with God. Amen? Now, see what it says. If, your heart condemn, if, if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. You see that? Yeah. Confidence what? Towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that what? That are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us what his commandment. Are you seeing this now? Oh, it's all, it's, all, it's, it's all speaking to each other that we've got to believe on the name of Jesus. Are you following me now? And when we do that, what happens? We have confidence towards the Father. Anybody got some confidence in this place? I've got confidence towards the Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Were you blessed today? Well, give God praise and give God glory in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for speaking to our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. And so in the name of Jesus, we receive grace. We receive grace to live the overcomer's life. To live a life of righteousness. To embrace the, the belief that we are right with God. Not because of what we have done, but because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, who died and he was raised from the dead for our redemption, our justification, our righteousness. We receive that today. We receive that today strong. We speak to every lying tongue of the enemy, every condemning voice, and we declare in the name of Jesus that, that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. We declare that we are the righteousness of God, that he has made us the righteousness of God because he that knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. And so we receive that today. We receive strength today. We receive joy today. We receive confidence today. We receive assurance today. We receive authenticity today. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. Spirit of a living God, fall fresh in this place. Touch, heal, and deliver. In the name of Jesus. You're here today and you say, Pastor, that word was for me. That word was for me. I've been struggling. The enemy has been messing with me concerning my righteousness, my faith, 
my stand. It's where I am with God. And so I know that I'm right not because of what I've done. I know I'm right because of what Jesus has already done on the cross. You're here today and you say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. That's me. You were speaking to me. God used this message to elevate my faith. If that's you, just shoot your hands up real quick. I see that hand all over the building, all over the building, all over the building. I see that hand. Oh, all over the building. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch, heal, restore, release, and power, infuse in the name of Jesus, your grace, your power, and your deliverance. I thank you for what you've already done. For some, it is the assurance. And I thank you for it right now. For some, it's the grace to endure, to stand and keep standing. And I thank you for it. For some, it's deliverance. Oh, Father, I thank you and I thank you for it even right now. But even whatever it is, God, we all fall at the feet of Jesus at the cross and we receive strength, we receive salvation, we receive restoration, and we receive redemption. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, somebody give God praise in this building. Come on, give God praise in this building. Glory, hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus. I trust this message has been a blessing to you. If it has, do me a favor and leave a, leave a note right there in that comment. We want to talk to you. We want to fellowship with you. And we want to connect with you. Until, until next time we see each other, this is Pastor Michael from Creator's Church saying, we love you. Jesus loves you. And Jesus is Lord. Somebody give God praise in this building. Amen.